Well, hello there. Merry Christmas, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Well, how are you guys doing? Well, we're glad you're here with us. It's candlelight Christmas Eve service, our second service, and we're going to do something unique here at this service. How many of you grew up where the kids would get to have the Christmas story read to them? Did you? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. All kids that want to... Come on down here, and I'm going to read you a story. You can sit right here with me. And if you're an adult and want to come down, too, you can. If you're a kid at heart, come on down. Yep, that's right. Come on down. Hi. You can sit right by me if you want, or you can sit on the floor. Sydney, come on. Come on. Hi. Hi. Come on and have a seat. You can sit right here, right here. And I'm going to read you a story out of this big book. It's a big, big book. Okay, you can sit down there. So this is the story about Jesus' birth. You see this? And there's some people in this book that want to tell us a little bit of a story about their involvement with Jesus. So this first story is about a guy named Isaiah. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. And this is what it says. Long ago, a man named Isaiah told people that Jesus would come and help them. Jesus knew, or Isaiah knew that Jesus is God's son. See that? Okay, good. Turn the page here, see if I can do it. Here. I saw you on Halloween. You did? I saw you too. Okay, here's the second page. It says, when it was time for Jesus to come, God sent an angel to tell Mary... Mary was afraid at first. She'd never met an angel, but she was happy to hear God had chosen her to be Jesus' mother. And then here's the next page. God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream. The angel told G Joseph that Mary's baby would be God's son, Jesus. On the next page, tells the story about Mary and Joseph. Before Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a very crowded place. No one had a place for them to stay. See that? They had nowhere to go. So what happened? Mary and Joseph had to stay in a stable. Jesus was born there. Mary wrapped him and laid him in a manger. Does anybody know what a manger is? What? You forgot? You remember? Yeah. It's a place where animals, um, like they put hay and food for the animals. And they them. Yeah, so it's like a box looking thing that they would put food in and hay, and that's where Jesus was laid with all the, angel, with all the animals and with his mom and dad, Mary and Joseph. And then it says, angels appeared to shepherds and told them about Jesus. So these shepherds were out in the field taking care of their sheep and angels showed up and told them about Jesus was being born. So the shepherds left their sheep and went to Bethlehem to see baby Jesus. They were some of the first people to get to see baby Jesus. And the last page... Then some wise men followed a very special star to come and worship Jesus. And we get to worship Jesus too. See that? They came from a long way. Just like we drove here today, we get to worship Jesus too. What do you think of that story? Any questions? No? Okay, would you guys extend your hand and we'll pray over all these kids. God, we are so grateful for children. They are a reminder that Jesus came as a child and grew in both stature with both man and with you, God. And we pray that for each one of these children, for all of our children, God, that they would grow in stature with both you and with their peers. Lord, we pray for supernatural provision and protection and favor over them. We pray that they will be filled with your spirit so that they will know and love you and serve you their whole life. God, we are grateful for baby Jesus that we can worship and we know we get to spend eternity with you and with all of our loved ones. And we love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen.
Amen. All right. You guys get some coloring. We have some coloring books and crayons for you to get. You have some. If you haven't gotten any, you can get some coloring books and some crayons. And then you can go back to your chairs. Thanks for coming up. Let's thank these guys for coming up. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. How are we doing tonight? Good. This is my favorite day of the year. We get to come and worship Jesus and remember the birth that he came as God and became a baby for all of us. And so this is our connect card time. So if you're new with us, we welcome you here. We're very happy that you are with us today. And you can find your connect cards in the seat back pocket in front of you. If you're in the front row or the back row, it's underneath your chair. Let's pull out our connect cards and wave them in the air. Come on, it's cold outside. I saw it snowing, we gotta warm up. Awesome, we're gonna light some candles to warm us up later. But these are our connect cards. I love our connect cards because it gives us the chance to connect with every single person. If you're new here, look over the blue card, fill it out in its entirety, and we would love to connect with you, plug you into this, our church, let you know what we have here at New Song and how you can get involved. Also, look on the back if, if you're interested in serving and check a box and we will call you and connect with you. But my favorite card is the black card because on the black card, on the back of it is our prayer requests and our praise reports. And every Tuesday, the staff fasts and praise over every single one of these cards. And we've seen amazing things happen, like miracles, healings, breakthroughs, financial pr uh, provision, because we serve a God that loves to answer prayers, amen? Just like thousands of years ago, he answered the prayers of the prophets and of the kings and of the people of Israel when he sent his son to be born. God loves to answer our prayers. And then also, we have our five ways to give card. It's this orange card in front of you. Uh, there are five ways to give as well as today we'll be taking our offering and our connect cards. You can hold on through the service and place them in these baskets just like the wise men came and laid their gifts at the feet of Jesus. We are going to do that today. And so uh, we just want to encourage you to look over this card. On the back has our heart behind why we worship and, uh, and why we give and it's a part of our worship. And so um, I'll pray and we'll enter back into worship. But remember, hold on to your cards and hold on to your offering and bring them forward at the end of the service. And you can also place your candles next to the baskets as well at the end. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being born. Thank you for being our God. That you came and you died for us. What an amazing gift that is as we celebrate your birth. Lord, we love you. We give you our, our, our tithes and our offerings, and we give you our, our, uh, our cards, our prayers. God, we ask that you would move through every single one of them. We love you. We give you this time. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Would you stand with us as we enter back into worship? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing.
amazing. You've got a shout of praise today. What an amazing day. Remain standing as we'll, we're continuing this, this act of worship. But in Luke 2, verse 6 through 7, it says, While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And that's why we're here today, is we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. Jesus was born as a fulfillment of the promise and a fulfillment of the clock that started ticking the moment that sin entered this world. Because as soon as Adam and Eve made the choice of, of taking a bite from the fruit, God knew that he would have to send his son to die for us. He would have to send his son, the perfect lamb, the spotless one, to die for us, to die for our sins so that we might have salvation. Just like that famous passage says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is what we celebrate here today. This is the beginning of the life of Jesus that was uh, that culminated in his crucifixion, but more importantly, in his resurrection, which we celebrate on Easter. God gave the greatest gift of all. He gave his one and only son for every single one of us. He gave his one and only son for me, for you. He gave his one and only son for a world where he knew that not everyone would choose to follow him. But at the same time, he said, I love them so much that I'm going to make them a way that they can have life forever. You see, when Jesus was born and now is and will always be, he is the true form of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And on that holy night in Bethlehem, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. The God of the universe, the creator of all, the one who at the very beginning said, let there be light, came as a baby. He didn't come as a king riding on the clouds. He will when he comes back. But he came as a humble baby in a place where there was nowhere for him to stay except in a manger full of straw and hay. Jesus came for us on that holy night. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, your son. Thank you that through that baby, through him, as he grew into a man and is our king, through him we can be saved. God, you are the God of greatness, even in that manger. We invite you here, Holy Spirit, be with us. And we thank you for that holy night in Bethlehem. We love you and we give this to you in Jesus' name. Need. 
when Christ was born. Truly He taught us to love one another. His law is love and His gospel is Chains he shall break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus praise we let all we in us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power and son to save us a broken hopeless people but you made a way by sending your son on that fateful night you made a way for all of us to call ourselves sons and daughters of the most high king and so God tonight we remember what that means. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, seeing that we cannot do it alone. But God, we cry out to you, knowing that that's your desire, to relate, have a relationship with us. And so God, may we never forget that fateful night. God, we owe it all to you. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, Merry Christmas. Welcome to church. If you would, please have a seat.
Yes, yes, yes. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've waited for this for so long. So long. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. Yes, he's on. Oh, it's okay. government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. to pick up the chosen it's a great show about the birth of jesus well merry christmas again you've heard it a hundred times you're probably going to hear it a hundred more times and i love to say it merry christmas to you guys this is our annual christmas eve candlelight service our first one was a lot of fun and i don't know if you guys got to come and eat some cookies in between services but there are something we tried i don't know how was the traffic was it pretty crazy out there not too bad well good 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 we weren't sure how that was gonna go if this is your first time here, we want to give you a special welcome as well uh, to our new song family. In the month of December, it's called Advent. <clears throat> and what Advent means is the revelation of the baby, the birth and the coming of Jesus to earth. And each Sunday, we celebrate a word that kind of encaptures uh, and, and, and in kind of um, it, it encapsulates all of what Jesus means to us. The first Sunday we uh, celebrated the word hope, and the second Sunday was peace, third Sunday was joy, and then last Sunday was love. And these four things can be um, elusive. They can, we can chase them. We can try to spend a bunch of money to find them. And they're things that Jesus wants to freely give us. We just have to take time to ask him and sit at his feet, and he loves to give us freely hope, peace, joy, and love. So that's what we're celebrating today. And it's with the, with the um, candlelight service, it's very interesting of why we do the candlelight service. And, and you maybe have asked that question before, why candlelight? What is the deal? We're gonna talk about that in a second. So would you pray with me? Lord, we are, thank you for this time that we get to come together and be together and celebrate everything that Christmas is the birth of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, and all that goes along with it. We're so grateful we get to remember and celebrate his birth. I pray, God, that we all experience your spirit in a unique, in a unique way here during this service, maybe in, in a way we've never experienced him before, maybe in a way that uh, involves hope and peace and joy and love in our hearts that maybe we've never experienced before. So we ask that you draw us to yourself. We ask that the birth of Jesus would remind us that you want to birth new things in us as we move through the rest of this year and into 2019. 
And we ask this in the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. So as I said, some people say, well, why, what is the deal with candlelight service? Isn't it dangerous? What if it burns the place down? Or what if somebody gets burned? Or what if it's a mess? Or what if, what if, what if? And so it kind of can be strange. Like, what is the purpose of a candlelight service? So I'll kind of explain it to you. It starts here first with this candle. It's called the Christ candle. It's a simple candle. It represents God's gift to the world in the first advent, the arrival of Jesus as a baby king. Over the years, there's been a lot of babies who have become kings. But there's only one king that became a baby. A baby. And the first time Jesus came, it was really simple, very humble. He was born in a stable, as we read with the children. And C.S. Lewis put it this way. Once in our world, a stable had something in it that was bigger than the whole world. While Jesus was surrounded by love when he came the first time, that love was very subdued. And it was confined to some animals, some family and some eyewitnesses. Jesus arrived at a time in our world when it was spinning out of control. I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at the world and I go, it's spinning out of control. But the truth is, when Jesus came, it was the lowest point of humanity's existence. And it's hard for us maybe to think about it or to believe or understand because we weren't there. But it was a very, very dark time in the history of the world, a lot of despair. And that same despair overshadowed Jesus' entire life. From starting with an attempt on his life as a child and then ending in crucifixion, a far cry from what a king deserves. So this the single simple candle reminds us that Jesus came as a humble baby, the servant king of kings, shining like a candle in darkness, a darkness that at that time was buried in utterless lack. All of the hope, all of the joy, all of the peace, all of the love, was, it was it, this darkness that engulfed it. And Jesus came as that candle, as that light in that darkness. So that's what we celebrate in the candlelight service, this, starting with this one candle, God's gift to us, all of us individually, and everyone. So at this time, the readers, we're going to read the Christmas story. And so you guys can come up here, and they're going to read the Christmas story to us in a second. But as they come, I want to ask you another question in light of the candle. If the Christ candle, this candle, represents the first advent, the first time Jesus came to the earth, that was 2,000 plus years ago. What does it mean to us now? And what does it mean to us for our future? Well, just like the privilege and the honor that those first followers, the shepherds and the wise men, that, that first, when they first had the opportunity to worship him, we still, we today have that same opportunity to come and to worship just as they did. They traveled, right? The shepherds traveled from their fields. The wise men traveled from the east. You guys all traveled here to worship corporately together, Jesus. We have the same opportunity that they had. And just as the magi, the, the wise men brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we bring gifts. We bring our prayers, our worship, and any other gift we may have. So this was something publicly that the magi, the wise men, and the shepherds were doing, and that's what we corporately gather. Is it's a public, uh, it's a public display. It's an opportunity for us to come and fulfill and do the same thing that those first followers did. Until, and we get to do this, until Jesus returns in the second advent, where He will return in not as a baby, but He will split the sky and come to earth, and He will come in glory and in power to rightfully claim what is him. And he will rule with truth and justice. And this will be the completion and the consummation of all the ages. And it'll begin a whole new age. So at this time, we will listen to the story of the birth of Jesus. Jesus. 
Luke 1, 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come out you, come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Matthew 1, 18 through 25, Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. When Joseph woke up, he did not, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and she gave him the name Jesus. Luke 2, 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that an <clears throat> that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. <clears throat> so Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee and Judea, and to Bethlehem and to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. <clears throat> they were <clears throat> When he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was accept, expecting a child, when they were there, the the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Luke 2, 8 uh, through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all these things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Matthew 2, 1 through 11, the Magi visit the Messiah. 
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let's thank these guys for sharing. <clears throat> so that's the story through it, all kinds of different perspectives as we think about the birth of Jesus. Each one of the characters that they read about all have a testimony. One of the people that I want to highlight, one of the groups of people, were the shepherds. They had this incredible story, and they got to be one of the first group of people to see baby Jesus. And I, I've always wondered, because there isn't much in the scripture that says about it, that tells about him. It doesn't say their names or, or what field they were in. And so when I get to heaven, I want to find out who they are. I want to say, what, where are they? What's your name? Tell me the backstory and all of the stuff that isn't recorded. I really want to know what it was like to see angels and to be in a field and to, to go research. How did you know what stable and all that stuff? But the point is, is their story echoes through eternity. We all know the story of the shepherds and the angels and them going and seeing baby Jesus. And it's because God wanted to give them that gift, a story, a testimony that they got to be of the low of the low. They were kind of the low of society. They got to be one of the first to go see Jesus. And I love that story. And God wants to not just give shepherds stories, but all of us stories. He has created us to carry the message of what he has individually done in our life and so that we can share it with others. So at this time, I want to introduce and invite up Jody Kildy. Come on, everybody. Welcome Jody up here. So we all have a story, right? We all have a testimony, and we like to highlight them. I love having people come up and share their stories on Sundays and and there's just, it's an incredible thing to listen and listen to and see what God has done in a person's life and how they can turn things around. And so Jody and I, we've uh, got to know each other and it's been, it's been so cool to hear about God's story. So thank you for your willingness to come in and share uh, about it with everybody. So start from the beginning and kind of tell us what, tell us your story. Okay, well, I am originally from North Dakota here, and um, my upbringing was good. I came from a really good family and um, came to know the Lord at 15, and then um, decided to go to massage school and moved away, and then um, came back to North Dakota for a short period. So you had read. pretty good upbringing? And, yep. Okay, good. Yep. yep, everything was good. Can't really complain. Everything was good. And decided to go to massage school and um, left and then came back to North Dakota for just a short period of time and picked up and left and went to Myrtle Beach, um, South Carolina, and was there around that area for a while. And I was led down there by the man who would eventually become my husband. And uh, so things were not great. I went through a period where I really drifted from God for the majority of my marriage, to be honest. And uh, God wasn't particularly welcome in my marriage. And so um, 
I struggled with that because I was kind of, I made a decision to be what I was kind of expected to be in his eyes, a good wife, as opposed to follow God. So it was something that I battled with for quite some time. And um, so things got really rocky in my marriage and it was no longer safe for me to be in North Carolina and to stay married. So I came back here and uh, started coming to New Song about two years ago, somewhere around there. And uh, just found myself really broken. I share that my, my road back to Dakota was paved with brokenness and tears, but it was the best decision I ever made. So I came here and just continued to buy the lies of being too broken and too worthless because what was God gonna do with a separate and soon to be divorced woman? <laughs> and so I just really battled with that and struggled and struggled and struggled with worthlessness and whatnot and just kind of kept plugging in. And um, went to family camp last year and that was my first experience with a prophet with Ben Dixon. And I'll never forget so he had- two a, years ago. Or two years, yep, I'm sorry, right. two years. Oh, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but anyways, long story short, I was really, I've been in worship pretty much my whole life. But I was nervous because of what led me out of North Carolina and because we had a YouTube channel and all of that. The enemy was really feeding into my mind that my soon-to-be ex was going to see me. And just all of this stuff was coming up. And But it was such a void in my life. So long story short, Ben Dixon um, was sharing his word with me. And abruptly, he stopped. And he looked at me. And he turned to the worship stage two years ago. And he just said, you know you need to be up there, right? And I just, <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, but anyways, just really started praying about it. And um, long story short, just came to the sanctuary and started walking the sanctuary during, during worship practice because I knew it was such a void in my life. And then one day, Angela said, Jody, I need your help. Those words. <laughs> and so I said, sure. So long story short, started with worship, started plugging in here. And then um, this past year, January, so much changed. Um, the beginning of January, the Lord really laid on my heart two words, restoration and renewal. And I didn't know what they meant, but I just held fast to those two words. Started the internship program in January, and that changed my life. Um, it was an amazing experience. And I stepped into the internship with two primary goals. My primary goal, number one, was just to know my creator better. And my, my cry before internship was, Lord, please just help me see myself through your eyes, not through mine, not through his eyes, not through the eyes of the world, but please just help me see myself through your eyes. And um, interestingly enough, that's one of the first things that we covered in internship. And so it was just God's way of solidifying in me that my identity was in him. And um, from there, it was amazing. Midway into internship, I got a call in to uh, become a pastor. So that was unexpected. <laughs> um, and the second thing that I really wanted to do in internship is I really wanted to learn how to study the word, just to really study the word. And as I did, I mean, the word just became alive. And so just really plugging into um, getting into scripture and whatnot. And through that is where I received my call into ministry. I feel as though I've been called into ministry for years. But because of the nature of my marriage, um, I just, I ran from that call. Because again, I just believed so many lies. Because there was, you know, the marriage was rough pretty much from the beginning. And so, um, but yeah, I'm just... It's amazing to me to see this last year and to see what God has done. And uh, yeah, so restoration and renewal are, and as I share my story over this last year with people, I'm finding that I don't believe those words were just for me. I think that this year has been a time of restoration for a lot of people. And uh, I think God wants us to know that renewal is coming. That's awesome. So renewal this is this is, when we think about testimonies, we think about the shepherds or the wise men or Mary or Joseph or whoever, we all have a story. And it's so important to share it because it builds our faith and it builds others' faiths. And wherever you're at right now, we really believe this. Moving, turning the, the calendar over from December to January, and from eight, 2008 to, to, to 2019, that, that restoration, that renewal, God loves to bring good out of bad. He is a restorer. And our prayer is that just as Jody has experienced that, that wherever you're at in your life, that you will know God is available. He wants to be close. He wants to bring good out of bad. And all you got to do is reach out to him, call out to him. He's the easiest relationship you'll ever have. You can call out to him anywhere, anytime. And he wants to be involved in whatever it is that you're going through. And he is willing and able to do more than we could ever think. So with that said, anything else you want to leave with us? 
No, I just believe it's going to be a good year, not just for myself, not for New Song, but for everybody. I think yeah. God's got some big things in store for 2019. Yes. yes. So with that said, would you guys extend your hand, and we're going to pray over Jody here. God, we just are grateful that you are a God of restoration and that Jody's testimony, like the shepherd's testimony, is of your faithfulness. You love to do things in our lives and, and to be present and to guide and to direct. And your word tells us every perfect gift comes from above. And you have, are, here's Jody, a walking, living testimony for us. And Lord, we want that for all of us. Lord, as we move into 2019, I pray for all of us that, God, you would draw us to yourself, take us deeper into relationship with you and, and give us greater and more testimonies and stories of your faithfulness for our lives, for our homes, for our community. We want to see your kingdom come in greater measure on earth as it is in heaven. So, Lord, we just thank you for Jody as she has come up and shared her story. We pray for supernatural provision, protection, and favor on her life as she moves into this next season. And we trust it all to you, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank Jody again for coming up and sharing. We'll hear more from her in the future. So one of my favorite sayings is uh, ordinary people, extraordinary God. And I should have brought it up here, but I, I've, I've said that, I don't know, over the last couple of months, I've said it two or three or maybe four times, I don't know, in various services. Ordinary people, extraordinary God. And somebody came up to me after the first service and they had this present on the, on the front chairs with a, some uh, Christmas wrapping draped over it. And I thought it was really cool. And, or I didn't know what it was, honestly. I was like, well, what is this? And they said, it's a gift from you, for you. And I said, do you want me to open it now or what? And she goes, yeah, so just lift up. And I lift it up and here's this beautiful wood and on it is this script ordinary people, extraordinary God. We're going to post it somewhere in the building. But this girl doesn't even biz, live in Bismarck, watches us online and made it and sent it to us and our church family. And so we're going to display it. But I love that story. Ordinary people, extraordinary God. He wants to be extraordinary in your life. If you have never experienced him as extraordinary God, I encourage you to invite him in this Christmas to do just that. Be extraordinary in your life. So at this time, the ushers can come forward. We're going to light their candles and then we're going to light each other's candles. Each one of us holds a candle in our hand, which we will light from the Christ candle. And when we do light this candle and light our own candles, if you have never made a conscious decision to become a follower of Christ, to welcome into your life and into your home, this is a great time to do that. So as you light your candle, just say in your heart, yes, Jesus, you're welcome in my life. Forgive me of my sin. Make me your son. Make me your daughter. And I will trust you the rest of my life. Then as we light each other's candles and we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus, it also reminds us that we get to take part in sharing our stories, the great story of Jesus' life, his birth, his death, his resurrection to save us from our sins. We get to share that in our own stories with our family, our friends, and the whole world. So as you light somebody else's candle, it's a reminder. You get to share the story of hope, peace, joy, and love. The good news of Jesus that he takes away the sin of the world and he will come again, the son of the living God, the light of the world.
Silent night, holy night. God, we are grateful that we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. This one candle that lights all of our candles so that we may go and be a light in this world. If you want to hold, grab your connect card, we are going to pray over them together like we do every Sunday. God, as we hold these connect cards in our hands, they represent our lives, the lives of others, situations oftentimes that are out of our control. God, we ask you be, to be Emmanuel, God with us, in every situation written on these cards. God, we come to you with one heart and one voice asking you to pour out your spirit, to bring good out of bad, to bring restoration, reconciliation, wholeness, health. God, we're grateful that we can crawl up into your lap at any time and share with you everything going on in our life and leave them with you knowing that you are willing and able to do what we can't. We are grateful that you are limitless and that we acknowledge we are limited, but we know where to go. So we come to you. We commit these to you as we close out 2018 and move into 2019, God. We're grateful for all you've done and we're excited about what you're going to do. And we trust it to you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's stand together. We're going to close with the Lord's Prayer. A couple instructions to close. After we're done here, you can blow your candle out and come forward. You can just set the candle on the stage, on each side of the stage here. Then your connect cards of the staff fast and praise for them every Tuesday. You can put those in the baskets. And just like the Magi and the Wise Men, we like to, there's people who ask every Christmas, can we bring an offering just like the Wise Men on Christmas Eve. So if you have a gift, you can bring that and put that in the basket as well. And then, reminder, you're invited to church every Sunday at 9, 10, 30, and then at noon we have a special service for those who are being raised up and called to preach and teach and be involved in ministry. So we want to give you a warm welcome. With that, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys. Merry Christmas.